Hi, I'm Corey, and you're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a weekly video podcast dedicating to quickly summarizing all the big network and information security stories each week. Let's talk about the week starting February 20th. As usual, there were a bunch of anonymous related stories this week, but I'm personally kind of getting sick of some anonymous stories, so this week I'm going to try to avoid all the anonymous stories. If you're really interested, I'll share some of them in the URLs below this particular video. But for this week, let's not talk about anonymous. So what does that leave us with? I'm actually just playing around, despite the fact that it seems like almost every security uh, headline this week has something to do with Anonymous. There's actually plenty of non-Anonymous related stories this week. One of the first is an update to last week's public RSS key story. If you remember last week, I was talking about a cryptographic weakness that researchers found in the public SSL keys that are sometimes used to encrypt web traffic and are definitely used to encrypt many, many other things. This week, the researchers kind of released an update to their research. A lot of the media was reporting, including my particular podcast, that this weakness could affect web certificates being used to protect, say, online banking sessions or shopping sessions. While this might be technically true, uh, the truth is that the actual keys that were vulnerable to this, none of them have been found to be used by any certificate authorities. So the researchers stated specifically that only certain embedded devices have been found in the wild that were vulnerable to this particular cryptographic weakness we mentioned last week. Now, the particular researcher hasn't released which devices are vulnerable to this yet. They're waiting till they inform the manufacturers. But if we do find out, we'll update you in another video podcast. There are a few stories related to the US government and security that came out this week you might want to be aware of. The first is the chairman of the FCC in the USA, the, the Federal Communications Commission, uh, released an announcement saying that he believes that ISPs need to actually take responsibility in protecting their customers from cyber threats. He talked about how ISPs should take measures to detect botnet traffic coming from their customers and perhaps block it and inform their customers about it. He also said ISPs need to start taking advantage of DNSSEC to help protect their customers as well. So he seems to think that ISPs need to take responsibility for some of their customers, and apparently a few ISPs like Comcast tend to agree with him. Another government-related story was this week the Obama's administration released a, a bill, a proposed bill, talking about uh, the private data of users online and how different online entities should handle our private data. Now this is a particularly big problem in the US right now. Uh, we're sharing more and more private data online with a lot of big uh, providers like Google and Facebook and so on and so forth. In Europe they actually have some pretty strong customer or, or citizen privacy laws that prevent companies from sharing private data and making sure that the customers actually have control of what private data different companies companies can have in store. So this bill is probably going to give the US similar types of measures. Uh, nothings, it's just a proposed bill right now. It has to go through Congress. I'm sure it's going to be refined a lot. Uh, but if you're a consumer, you should probably watch this. It's a, a good bill for us to help, help protect our private data. Also, if you're a business, you might want to take a particular note of this as it may affect some of your business practices in the future. While I haven't mentioned it in previous uh, WatchGuard Security Weeks in review, over the past few years, there's a particular strain of malware called DNS Changer that's affected hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of computers, both PCs and Macs, by the way. Well, this particular malware messes with your computer's DNS. Uh, it either changes your DNS servers or your host file in different ways so that when you're trying to, say, go to google.com, you're really going to the attacker uh, you know, server or computer, and he might redirect you to google.com, but meanwhile he can see everything you do. 
But a while back, the U.S. government, the FBI, actually found, you know, took care of this malware, found the DNS servers that it was actually redirecting to, and actually created what they call a safety net. It converted those DNS servers from being malicious man-in-the-middle DNS servers to actually allowing people that were un unknown victims of DNS changer to just go to the internet normally. But what that also means is there's many victims out there that have DNS changer in their network and they have no clue because they can get to the internet. Well anyways, over the past few weeks, the FBI has been talking about the date March 8th, where it planned on shutting down these servers. And what that means is if you're a person infected by DNS uh, changer, your computer wouldn't be able to, to go to the internet. Well, it would have an internet connection, but it wouldn't be able to find any addresses. So it would seem like your computer couldn't get to the internet. And this would be a good way for those victims to realize they were infected. However, this week the FBI did file an extension with the U.S. government to maintain these safety net servers a little longer. Uh, the FBI wants to maintain the servers to July 9th. I'm not exactly clear why they want to extend this date. Perhaps it's because this particular malware has infected you know, many, many businesses and they're worried about the loss of productivity that's going to happen when those computers might get cut off the internet. But in any case, if you're worried about your computers, there's many products out there that will scan for DNS changer. I recommend you go out there and scan your local network for this malware. And that way you don't have to worry about this particular cutoff date. So let's finish up the week with a few non-anonymous breaches that happened. There was two of note. Uh, one of the first that happened on, I believe it was Thursday, or we were told about it on Thursday, was Philips Electronics, a big company. It turned out someone hacked their website. Uh, this came from an organization called the Hacker News where they mentioned two hackers, not anonymous related, were somehow able to breach Philips Networks or Philips Electronics website as well as some of their other domains. And they defaced the website which means they changed the front page but they also stole some data. So Philips is still researching how big this particular breach is but if you are a Philips customer some of your data may be in a hacker's hands right now. The next breach comes from Stephanie Meyer. You're probably aware of this person as an author of the Twilight series. She writes about vampires and werewolves. Well, this week she's serving up zombies. It turns out that Stephanie Meyer's website was somehow hijacked and forced to serve uh, or forced to, to host something called the Crimeware Exploit Pack. Now, this is one of the many web attack frameworks that criminals sell to each other on the, the criminal underground. It's it's a, a framework that makes it really easy to exploit drive-by downloads. Well, this malware turned up on Stephanie, Malware's, uh, Stephanie Meyer's site, and it uh, made it so that anyone that was visiting her site during this period of time, if they weren't patched, it would dry, do a drive-by download against them and install a botnet on their computer. So if you're a Twilight fan and you've been visiting Stephanie Meyer's site, if you haven't patched lately, you might want to check your computer for any viruses or malware. As an aside, do know our XTM appliances and our XCS appliances are very good at blocking these type of web-based attacks. Uh, between our gateway antivirus, our intrusion prevention, and the fact that we have strong proxies that really recognize web traffic very well and can tell the good traffic from the bad traffic, we can catch many of these drive-by download attacks and stop them from happening. So that's it for this week's Security Week in Review. As usual, be sure to check me out at Twitter. If you don't visit the WatchGuard Security Center on a regular basis, I recommend you go check it out as well. And finally, next week is going to be a bit unusual. Next week is RSA, a very, very big security conference. I'll be attending that conference. I plan on recording this session as usual, although it may be an on-the-road edition. And hopefully we'll have a lot of RSA-related news to bring you. Thanks for watching, and at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.